Hi, my name is Marnie Dobson and I'm the director of the Healthy Work Campaign. And welcome to our Healthy Work Campaign newsletter for April 2022. On April 28th, we observe Workers' Memorial Day. We remember workers who were killed or injured on the job and who won't be returning to their families after the day's end. We also use this day as a renewed fight for stronger health and safety regulations. In 2020, there were 4,764 fatal work injuries, although this was a 10% decrease from 2019's 5,333 fatalities. We have to remember that during the COVID-19 pandemic, we lost many workers, frontline workers, who were exposed to the virus at work and who were not classified as work-related fatalities. In 2019, an estimated 95,000 workers died from occupational diseases, but this, we believe, is drastically underestimated. Economists Joel Goh and Jeffrey Pfeffer uh, estimated that over 120,000 deaths per year are related to some major occupational work stressors, including such things as job demands, job control, lack of job security, and so on. My colleague Peter Schnell is going to take on the argument next for why it's important to really focus on the need for more regulation of the psychosocial work environment. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the latest version of our newsletter about our Healthy Work campaign. I want to convey my best wishes for Workers Memorial Day. Hope this message finds you all well. And we want to talk today a little bit about why still so many workers are suffering from stress at work and unhealthy working conditions. All of you may be thinking, well, why is it that after all these years of studying psychosocial hazards and understanding the role that they play in creating illness, both mental and physical among working people, why is it that we still have these psychosocial hazards present in the workplace? Other countries have been regulating psychosocial risks for many years. The European Union, the Scandinavian countries such as Sweden, Asian countries, Japan, Taiwan, and Korea have all taken steps to regulate and improve working conditions for their workforce. Why haven't we? What are the obstacles that we must get past to healthy work to create a healthy work environment. There are a number of them, and one of the most important is the ideological attitudes, ideas, and thoughts we have about what causes um, unhealthy work uh, behaviors. Part of the reason for the failure of the uh, American health establishment and the communicable diseases and uh, the medical treatment facilities to manage uh, illness has been the focus in, on, in, in our country on individual responsibility for disease. The medical profession believes that we get sick because we don't take good care of ourselves. We get high blood pressure because we're overweight, we don't exercise, we eat improperly, we don't regulate our salt intake. And the same goes for other health problems. And this is a major concern as as long as we conceive of people getting sick because of their own personal faults and shortcomings, it's impossible to recognize the importance of stressors in the workplace as contributing to those various behaviors. So we know, for example, that psychosocial hazards lead to people increasing their weight because of lack of activity or excess eating related to work stressors. And these factors, these upstream factors are ignored by the medical profession in making re re recommendations for how people can better manage their own health. There are other reasons why we are not having a success in creating a healthy workplace besides our ideological commitments to individual responsibility that we recognize as existing in the United States. Other obstacles include um, the lack of surveillance, uh, the lack of tools to identify the stressors at the workplace. We don't have 
a workplace survey in existence in the United States, which will allow companies or individuals or work-related organizations like labor, lab, labor groups to identify what are the stressors that are in existence in, a, in the workplace. So a lack of tools, and in addition to not being able to identify the stressors that are in existence at the moment, we don't have tools on how we can go about changing these stressors because change of work stressors has not been a subject of a lot of research in the United States. So this is a third obstacle. And then the most important obstacle is the fact that the government has failed to take on the task of regulating work stressors, even when the government knows that they exist. All of this struggle around trying to get the medical profession and the public and businesses to recognize the existence of unhealthy working conditions has been going on since the passage of the OSHA Act of 1970, which recognized physical hazards in the workplace, heat and cold and chemicals as causes of ill health. But since the passage of the OSHA, OSHA Act 52 years ago, there has been no regulatory recognition that stressors at the workplace are contributing to ill health and are just as important as the physical stressors that were regulated by the OSHA Act 52 years ago. Thank you all for listening to this, these short presentations from Marnie and myself about unhealthy working conditions, and we look forward to um, communicating with you and working with you to create healthy work conditions uh, in the near future.